black. Okay, we're here. We're here. We're here. How you doing, everybody? This is your buddy Uncle Bruce, uh, the guy that loves bagels. Um, I'm on the uh, stock market channel called the uh, Stock Marks with Bruce. This is my channel. Um, generally, I'm I'm based out of Canada, but uh, I'm on the road right now. I am in Stockholm. Sweden. Um, um, Jen, Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, Jen and I, Auntie Jen and I, are uh, uh, enjoying ourselves here. Beautiful place. Uh, we were just in Copenhagen last week. Beautiful place. Uh, and next week we're in Berlin. So uh, on the road, um, broadcasting to you from wherever we can to update you on what is going on in the markets in plain. English, uh, nothing complicated here, if at all possible. Uh, try to keep it simple uh, and go on. We have a market, uh, and I have been uh, touting this now for a week. Uh, the market is dying to go up. The stock market <clears throat> really wants to go up. Um, unfortunately, the uh, market has had issues being thrown at it. Uh, there have been roadblocks, one after the other after the other. Um, and uh, what can I say? Uh, you know, we have higher inflation than people thought that, that it would be right now. Inflation is actually rising in America. And it was thinking that, well, we'd be back to 2% in no time, and then interest rates can come back down again and not happening. We have higher interest rates. As a matter of fact, um, just 20 minutes ago, the European Central Bank raised their interest rate by quarter of a point. Again, that's like a Fed fund increase. Uh, that's a big deal. 400 plus million people are affected by another quarter point rate increase for interest for loans. And that is in Europe, where this economy here, 400 plus million people, is not doing well at all. Uh, it is sluggish. It has been slow for over a year and a half, and it is slowing down. It is not accelerating. It's not getting better here. It's getting worse. And rates are being raised even in a slowing economy and in the united states you listen to these analysts if you can understand half what they're saying if they're fancy schmancy words these guys are saying oh as soon as the u.s economy begins to falter interest rates will plummet because the federal reserve will want to stimulate the <coughs> u.s economy and protect jobs <coughs> protect jobs and protect the usa and all that's not going to happen. Um, these these uh, analysts, uh, unfortunately for many of you who watch me, um, you guys are, uh, most of you are under 50. It's not your fault. Uh, you know, uh, time goes on. And a lot of people who are, you know, older have passed away. Um, you know, someone who was 50 years old 50 years ago would be 100 now. They're not here. Uh, if they're here, they're drooling somewhere in the corner. Look, um, those of you under 50, you have never been in the uh, environment we're about to enter. The environment that we're entering is higher prices, higher interest rates for a long period of time. None of you, none of you have been through this in North America. Maybe you've been through it if you lived in Venezuela or you've lived in other countries where there have been serious problems, but not in North America, baby. The last time we in North America had to do this, I was 17 in 1972, and it lasted till the mid-80s, well into Ronnie Reagan's presidency. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of his presidency. We were living through hell on earth when it came to economics. It took George Bush, the father, to stand up and address the problem. It cost him the second term of his presidency when Clinton beat him. It didn't help that the Texas billionaire was trying to run against him as well. But in any event, no I'm living, no living North American, 50 or younger, was an adult the last time we had this problem. And this is a problem that is going to last years. I don't think it's one or two years. I think it's four or five years. I don't like to be the bearer of bad times, okay? I am Mr. Happy. I love talking about good things. And I guess one thing I will say that is good is that if you're an option writer, cash secured put writer, um, poor man covered call writer, 
um, you're into condors, iron condors, you guys are going to make a lot of money, a ton of money. But you've got to be patient. You've got to be resolute. And you better be educated on how options work. And you know what I'm going to tell you? Hit, get your butt over to my website and get those classes under your belt. There's 16 of them, and you've got studying to do. All right, look, more classes are coming. We'll keep going down the road here. But uh, this economy in the U.S. is expected to slow down as well. You cannot have an expanding America uh, because you want it to be expanding. It, it doesn't work that way. There is no way the U.S. economy or the Canadian economy along with it are going to have wonderful times the next two years with Europe slowing down further, China on the brink of insolvency, which they don't want to admit, Asia in a funk. There, there's We're not going anywhere. Uh, there, there is nothing good going on uh, to create an environment where the economies of the Western world, the G8, the G10, it's just all going to be, you know, apple pie and ice cream. It's just not the case. We are entering into a slowdown that will likely be a slight recession of some kind, maybe deeper. Certain regions of North America will have a tougher time than other regions of North America. That's normal. It's the way it always is. But we're going to see some casualties. Now, what kind of casualties? Well, there will likely be a number of corporations that will depart. Uh, they will just no longer exist. <coughs> or they will go into Chapter 11 bankruptcy and be reemerged as something else. A number of companies might be taken over by competitors because they can't survive on their own. You know, two companies struggling will form one and try to muck on. Um, there will be layoffs. There will be uh, hiring um, uh, drops. All that kind of thing. Now. For those of you who are um, 25 to 50, I have good news for you guys. It's not all bad. The good news for you guys is that there aren't all that many candidates out there to take away your job. It's not like people you know or, or your own position, you're going to get laid off because someone else better is coming along to take your job from you. Not happening. COVID did a huge favor to the North American workforce because Americans and Canadians, a certain percentage of North Americans were defiant and not taking the vaccines or they were defiant in their behaviors and how they conducted themselves and ultimately died from COVID, although some people say it was a flu. Millions of workers in the workforce in Canada, the U.S., from all levels, from, from senior levels all the way down to the factory floor, passed away. And they have not been replaced because the birth rate of Canada and the U.S. is falling, still falling, has been falling for 30 years, 40 years. We're not having kids like we were supposed to have kids. Um, our parents and our grandparents had children. We, uh, who are in our 40s, 50s, 60s, we didn't have enough kids to replace ourselves. And COVID accelerated the drop off of, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, older workers, workers in their mid 40s to their mid 60s, a huge chunk of those folks left the workforce from illness because they had to look after family members themselves or they got ill, a lot of a, a number which haven't fully recovered and or a lot died or a lot of these folks were bought out by corporations during the panic of the, the slowdown. A lot of corporations did buyouts for 45, 55 and 60 year olds to get rid of them. And they are now regretting their decisions because these folks aren't coming back. They got paid out and they're going, hey, I'm out. I got my dough, <clears throat> I've paid off my bills, I got my pension coming in, I've got my social security coming in, because four years ago, I was 61, 62, I'm 66, 67, I'm never going back. And North America workplace has gaps all over the place. So with a slowdown, pardon me, with a slowdown coming, economic slowdown coming, it won't matter. 
uh, there will be a, a perfect storm for the unemployment picture. Every month, more people are retiring than the month before because the boomers, that's me, are reaching retirement age in huge, huge numbers. Not all boomers retired at 55 or 60. A lot of boomers have decided to not retire until 65 to 70. This relentless march of the clock will not stop. And in the next few years, all boomers will be through 70 years of age. And they're out of the workforce one way or the other. Maybe one-tenth left. The rest gone. There is not enough workers behind these workers to fully replace them. The only way to do it is to allow the dirty word, immigration. And in the United States, impossible to get any party on either side of the aisle to agree on a plan. And that has been the reality since George Bush Jr. tried to do immigration. He couldn't get it done. Um, Obama took a look at it and went, oh, God, yeah, right. I want to touch this. Uh, Trump didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, now, Mr. Biden, uh, he's looking at it going, hey, I I'm letting in refugees. Uh, I, I, can let in, I can let in Ukrainians. I'll let them in, uh, but they can only stay a few years. Uh, there is no plan. Okay. What can I say? Um, all right. Option writers. You guys are in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Uh, you've got more victims to take advantage of than you've ever had in your life, ever had in the market's existence. Never in the entire history of the stock market have more people been trying to play the options market and make money on it than now. Never in the history of the stock market have the professionals who know what they're doing, and if you take my classes, I think I'm going to put you in that camp that you kind of know what you're doing. You've never had it so good. If you are not taking advantage of the classes that we've put together that most of the folks who are watching here have taken, you are asking to be a loser. And I can't help you. You, you, you want to be a loser and try and take it on. Do it yourself. Knock yourself out. This is not that simple. But it's relatively easy to do if you kind of have the basics. Up to you to decide whether or not you want to do it. Look, um, I want to talk about something else that's uh, coming up. First of all, a quick announcement for those of you who are not Gold Bagel members and you were not here for the Trade Alert show that we did um, at um, uh, 8 o'clock, uh, was it 8 o'clock Eastern? Um, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, um, the, uh, the uh, big, big $350 billion investment outfit. They sold five and a half million shares of HPQ just a few days ago. They received about $29 a share, received $160 million bucks for that. They're now holding 115 and a half million shares. So they did have 121 million. Now they have 115.5 million shares worth $3.3 billion estimated. About 11%, 11.7% of the company is what they still have, but they did sell 5.5 million shares of stock at a loss. Their average cost was $36. About two years ago, they uh, have been selling at 29. I'm just telling you what I'm reading. So now you are aware of that. If you're an option writer and you have been an option writer or you're a shareholder of the company or you're a deep in the money call owner and you've been writing contracts on deep in the money calls, you have obviously noticed in the last month, shares go from 33 to 32 to 31 to 30, now down to the 27 range. All of you who have written contracts have seen significant depreciation of your contracts. My advice to you is to buy back your calls for a fraction of what you sold them for and turn around right now and write new contracts in that 28, 29, 30 dollar range right out till January or beyond. And take in more money out of the money contracts take in cash to be compensated for any more downside that is the name of this game okay that's one piece of news the second thing was i mentioned it the european central bank <coughs> raised the interest rates by quarter point that was done this morning now uh, the heat is on the federal reserve back in the u.s for its next meeting later this month all right now I want to talk to you about something else. Uh, talking about history, again, I 
I bring history up on this channel because the human race is so stupid. We are such idiots as human beings. We make the same mistakes again and again and again. We keep repeating ourselves, and yet we keep thinking, oh, this time it'll be different, um, and it's not. Um, but I want to talk to you about something that happened in 19, the early 1960s that um, is still with us, uh, a, a government policy that has not been eliminated, even though it would make a lot of sense if it were eliminated, it has not been eliminated. Um, and this little story will confirm to you, I hope it confirms to you, I, I know some of you just don't want to believe me when I keep telling you this, but the United States, Canada, we are very socialistic. We, we really cater to corporations. We, we give corporations every break imaginable to, to succeed. And yet we call it free enterprise. It, it isn't. It is government intervention in free enterprise to ensure that certain corporations, depending on the business and where they're from, do well and have a leg up on competition. And here's a story for you from 1962, three, whatever it was. At the time, there was a, a little trade dispute that uh, was going on that was no one was paying attention to it. Um, but it did catch the media's eye. What happened was after the Second World War was over, countries like the, uh, like the United Kingdom, uh, Ireland, uh, and all the European countries were coming out of the last of those dark days after the Second World War. Remember, the Second World War ended in April 1945 um, uh, through Europe and through the, through the 40s and the 50s. Many countries in Europe were still forcing their citizens to um, buy groceries and other essentials using ration cards. These ration cards that you've probably heard about in school, you may have seen on some documentaries over the years. There were ration cards in Canada and the United States, along with all the countries, most of the countries in Europe. Ration cards ended in the U.S. and Canada very quickly after the war. Within a year or two, they were all history. And any American could buy whatever they wanted. Uh, Canadians could go out and buy sugar again and all that good stuff. But in Europe, Countries in Europe were under the ration system until the mid-50s. It took 10 years because a lot of uh, reparations had to be paid between countries. War damages. One of the things that the European countries wanted to do as well was to alleviate a food crisis in Europe. This was a big problem after the war. The United States and Canada and other countries like Venezuela and Brazil were producing wheat, were producing cows, meat, uh, chickens, lamb, um, turkeys, uh, uh, oats, uh, you name it. I mean, food was being grown everywhere and was being imported into a, the Euro European area to help the Europeans through their shortages. But as each year went by, Europe got their act together and began to clear all the landmines out of the farmer's fields and mechanized uh, machinery came in at great subsidies from America and elsewhere. And these countries got their act together to produce more food. By 1960 or so, there was an issue that popped up. And that was that the UK and Europe were feverishly trying to encourage their domestic farmers to produce huge flocks of chicken to produce chicken the meat they needed the eggs but they needed the birds uh, we need drumsticks and breasts chicken breasts and uh, the uk did a masterful mega job uh, promoting this to their farmers and huge farms were created to produce huge numbers of chickens at much lower prices per per bird before the war it was almost unheard of for anyone in Europe to go to a grocery store, a local butcher, and buy an entire chicken to produce for the family. It didn't exist. You would buy half a chicken, a quarter of a chicken for a family, not the entire chicken. But after these subsidies kicked in, 
this really took off. And it got to the point where in the 60s, Europeans were now producing a ton of poultry, and so were the Americans. And the Americans and the Canadians had it good for a while because every bird you could grow, you could put into the take into the slaughterhouse, freeze, and then ship frozen chickens to Europe, and they would buy it all because they were desperate for the poultry. But by the 62, 63 range, Europeans had a lot of poultry now. And now they didn't need American poultry anymore. And so Americans, uh, Canadians, but Americans, they do what any other country's uh, uh, a trade group would do. When you are threatened with losing market share, you lower your prices and you flood the market with your product to try to muscle your way into the grocery store at a cheaper price. Well, the Germans basically had enough of that, uh, along with the European economic community, and they put on a tariff on American chickens called the chicken tax. Well, this didn't go over very well in uh, good old America. Uh, American farmers don't like being messed with uh, by, you know, little old losing countries over in Europe that we beat the crap out of in the Second World War. After all, we won the war. We should be able to sell chickens to whoever we want for whatever price we want to do it. Europeans said, uh-uh, you're not flooding our market with this stuff. You know, figure it out yourself. The chicken tax was imposed. Well, President Johnson, this would be, this would be 63, 64. President Johnson was under unbearable heat from the farming community because of this. And he had to come up with a response. And his pals in Detroit came along and said, hey, uh, Mr. President, we have the perfect solution for you. You need a political win against this chicken tax. And we're the guys who can give it to you. And the president and his team said, well, what do you boys have in mind? And the boys in, in, uh, in Detroit said, well, here at Ford, GM, and Chrysler, um, we've noticed that the West Germans are producing this VW Beetle, and now they're producing this, this Volkswagen bus. And that bus is available not only as a camper or a people mover, they're also taking the roof of that thing and taking half the roof off, the back half, and turning it into a pickup truck. That's a light truck. And in America, we need to be protected against imports of government-subsidized industries that produce light trucks. And so the president of the United States, Johnson, imposed what they called the chicken tax on all imported trucks from around the world. He didn't target VW. He just said it's all imported trucks. 25% tariff on any imported light truck into the United States. It's not built in America, 25% tariff. Today, right now, if you import a vehicle from Japan into the United States, a four-passenger, a car, a passenger car, uh, you import cars from South Korea, from China, Germany, England, it's a 2.5% average rate of duty, 2.5%. But for light trucks, which means pickup trucks, hello, 25% duty. Guess how many vehicles that sell in the United States that are known as pickup trucks are made in the United States of America? Yeah, you're, you're about right. It's over 95%. Very few vehicles come in under this rule. Toyota has figured it out. Back in the 80s, they figured out there was no way any president since Johnson would repeal this 25% tariff rule. Never done. No one would do it. Nixon wouldn't do it. Ford wouldn't do it. Carter wouldn't do it. Uh, Reagan wouldn't do it. He's a He was open for trading. He wouldn't do it. Uh, Bush... Uh, 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 Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, and now Biden. No one will remove the 25% tariff on imported light trucks. So Toyota 
they figured out back in the 80s, we'll build a plant in Texas and produce the Toyota Tacoma pickup truck in Texas. And so the the uh, Tundra, actually the Tundra, the Tundra pickup truck, um, uh, the factory in Texas has 3,000 U.S. employees producing the Tundra in, uh, in Texas. Um, there are no pickup trucks coming in from anywhere else. This, this tax will not be eliminated, which means Americans going to their car dealers to buy a Ford F-150 or a GMC truck or a Dodge Ram, you are paying an artificially high price for pickup trucks in the United States since 1964. This has been a subsidy given to the U.S. manufacturers of pickup trucks when there was no emergency back in 64. There was no emergency. But the, the folks in Detroit gave the president something or gave him an idea. Why don't you do this as a response to that? And to this day, the 25% tariff is still in place for pickup trucks in America. That is why a fully loaded um, GMC, uh, Denali, uh, leather loaded, sunroof, dual climate control, extended cab with every bell and whistle imaginable, they're a hundred plus thousand dollars. In reality, pickup trucks, if they were allowed into the U.S. under a two and a half percent tariff, like automobiles, you would see those kinds of vehicles, quarter ton, half ton, one ton vehicles coming into the United States at maybe half the price that Americans pay today. Ford and uh, General Motors made a profit of over $10 billion each in 2021. Where did all those profits come from when it was all said and done? Pickup trucks. Ford does not produce a car anymore. Ford does not produce passenger vehicles other than Mustangs. They don't produce a car. Ford does SUVs and light trucks. That's their business, and they do not want to go back to producing Escorts or Tauruses or Fusions or anything like that because they cannot compete with importers coming in with far superior product than Ford passenger cars. They can't compete with the quality. They can't compete with the, be the benefits, and they can't compete with the options and the price. Mexicans cannot produce pickup trucks unless they pay a minimum of $16 an hour to their factory workers in Mexico. And so even pickup trucks made in, the, in, in Mexico must be made at an hourly rate of uh, labor of $16 an hour. That is under the Trump administration. The Trump administration convinced the Mexicans to sign on to the latest North American free trade deal to protect the U.S. auto industry against truck imports from Mexico. And that deal is good until 2041. Today is 2023. That's got 18 more years to live. And no one is going to reverse it. The Detroit automakers have got so many lobbyists sitting in Washington. There isn't a hope of any importer around the world being able to bring in vehicles into the U.S. that will upset the U.S. car industry. The socialistic minded big three automakers have got the U.S. government around their finger and no president will go against them. In the meantime, there is a potential strike that might be called by the UAW at any time because at the end of business tonight, the labor contract expires between the UAW and the unions, if I'm not mistaken. The two parties are negotiating a new four-year working agreement and they are miles apart because the union is saying to the automakers you guys are making nothing but money you're producing vehicles that you want to produce making gobs of capital they don't mention the chicken tax by the way is one of the big reasons why they make this kind of money um, oh by the way that chicken tax that the europeans that, that lasted six months and it ended and it, it was never an issue ever again so the president of the united states william baines johnson could have ended the chicken tax on trucks back in 64, 65,
was was never done. Just so you know, it's still done. In any event, the unions are negotiating with the car uh, manufacturers for a new contract. The auto manufacturers want to be able to create new factories that will produce electric cars without unionized workers. They also want the right to shut down car plants and other plants that produce gasoline powered vehicles. They want to shut down engine plants, transmission plants, other plants as they phase out the combustion engine divisions, lay off those union workers forever, get rid of them and only hire non-unionized workers to produce electric car. The union is saying, screw you. Uh, that's not going to happen. Um, we're going to set a deal where uh, you're not producing anything unless it's with a unionized worker. Oh, and by the way, forget that two-tier deal that we gave you uh, 15 years ago. Forget about all the concessions we gave you 10 years ago. Forget about the 3% pay raises that we were taking for the last eight years. No, um, you guys have made billions and billions of dollars in profits. You're through all of your catastrophic financial hardships from the 2008, 2009 financial meltdown. It's 2023. It's been 15 years. It's time to pay your employees what they're really worth. And so there's your line in the sand. That's where we are right now. And because of the chicken tax, American consumers are being ripped off by the big three free enterprise producers of trucks big time uh, to at least, I don't know how many billions, because if it's 10 billion in profits to GM and 10 billion to Ford, and I don't know how many billions to Chrysler, those are net profits. The actual gross amount of money they're bringing in before they have net profits could be 100 billion a year. This chicken tax is worth hundreds of billions of dollars in social money handout from the government of the United States to the automakers at the expense of Americans. And almost zero Americans know about it. So there you go. There's your little story from 1960. And uh, the auto boys are not interested in that chicken tax going away ever, ever. They want that in place for the rest of time. And therefore, the folks at Nissan in, in, in Japan, Toyota, uh, the Honda people, the folks in, uh, in South Korea that can produce some pretty nice vehicles, uh, the folks in Vietnam, the Chinese automakers, the European automakers, they could bring into the United States for the U.S. market some pretty cool vehicles with advanced technologies at maybe half the cost that Americans are paying now. For 50 year old technological behind the times F 150s and Rams. As advanced as Rams and, and F 150s have become, they are still dinosaurs on American roads to this very day. And there you go. There's the, there's the story. What can I tell you? Oh, isn't it fun? Uh, the chicken tax. Uh, you're welcome, JJ. I'm happy to uh, tell you about it. <coughs> Unbelievable. By the way, did it hurt VW? Did, did VW get hurt by any of this? No. There's Volkswagens all over the United States. There are Volkswagens built in the United States by Volkswagen. There are BMWs being built in the United States. There are Honda Accords being built in the United States. There are Toyotas. There's Nissans being built in the United States. All kinds of vehicles in, in Canada, too. And yet, the amazing thing about all of that is that every single time that Toyota or Nissan or Honda, for an example, just in Canada, when they talk about the idea that, well, we're thinking of building a new plant to produce um, Nissan Sentras or uh, Nissan SUVs or Honda Accords or Toyota Corollas or whatever, whenever these companies float the idea that they're thinking of a new plant in North America, there's a war going on. There's a war going on between the province of Quebec, Ontario, and Canada against states in the United States. New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Texas. All of these states want the car plants in their states. The 
North Carolinians are and South Carolinians are bragging to the car companies, open up a new car plant here, Toyota, and we'll make it next to impossible for a union to be formed because this is a work to a right to work state. In other words, unions are the enemy. People getting screwed by their employers are what we're all about here. Corporations rule, people don't. In Ontario, the government there will say, I'll tell you what, uh, we'll give you tax breaks. You build that $400 million car plant in Ontario, and we'll give you $400 million in tax breaks. In other words, it's free. What you pay to build it, you'll be able to write off in taxes going forward. Um, they take those deals everywhere. And the, the, the socialism game continues in Canada and the United States for big business it never ends. It continues on. It's in your face if you want to look at it, if you pay attention to it. American and Canadian taxpayers get taken for a ride every time by these massive multi-billion dollar monsters. And don't think that the top-notch executives of these companies don't fly around in private jets. Oh, they do. They fly around wherever they go in private jets, have multiple houses, live the life of rally on the back of your tax dollars. The free enterprise system is alive and well in North America, and for some, it is very, very good. Anyway, there you have it. There's your story for the day. We are 23 minutes away from opening for trading today. The Dow is up 149 points. Um, with S&P up 20 and NASDAQ up 60. The three indexes are pretty close to each other. We're up about 0.4 to 0.46 of a percentage point on all three indexes. Oil up $1.42 this morning in Texas at 89.94. And there you go, psychological $90 level is being approached. And there's talk out there of oil shortages. While I'm telling you that the U.S. economy is going to slow down into a recession within the next six to nine months, oil is going up in price. There will not be a demand for oil to justify these prices. There isn't a demand for oil in China to demand uh, to justify these prices either. We're talking about prices that should be in the mid-50s at best. We are awash in oil. But there are pros out there and hedge funds out there bidding up the price of the commodity because there are derivatives allowed to be traded that are not regulated by any regulator anywhere in the world out there that are worth billions of dollars. And so the betting game is more powerful than the supply uh, and the demand game. Welcome to 2023. It's just the way it is. Uh, welcome, welcome all. This is why you've just got to figure out how to uh, get your fair share of this action. All right, so there it is. Uh, let's see what happens here. Uh, 58 thumbs up, says Coffee Kids Trading. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate that for these thumbs ups. Uh, keep them coming in, everybody. We're now shooting at 58 thumbs ups and rising. We have 21 minutes to go before we open on our day here. See what this market has in store for us. Such fun times, to say the least. It's great to have you here today. Appreciate you all joining us. Hopefully, you're going to make a bunch of money here going forward on the options market. I think you will. If you're a writer, you're going to make money. Playing Condors, I think you can do very, very well. I'm looking at a few uh, markets here like uh, Rocket Lab up $0.05, cents, SoFi just up 3 GameStop approaching $18, $17.96. That's higher than yesterday's high of $17.93. We're up 15 cents on GameStop. It looks to me like GameStop wants to go through 18. We'll see if it has enough moxie to do it. Matterport is up eight, uh, 23 and me up about two cents. Spires at 551. Uh, that was last night, I think. Uh, maybe or maybe that's this morning. I don't know. It was 576 yesterday, up two cents. ATIP is at uh, 959, up a dollar four this morning or last night. That's last night. Pardon me. Uh, 959 last night. Don't know if that's uh, very sustainable. Smart rent to uh, 277 last night. Um, Apple uh, up 12 cents. Goldman Sachs up a dollar 90. Cisco Systems up 11. Tesla's up 88 cents. Gained 380 yesterday. 
Arc Innovations is up 21 cents, lost 58 yesterday. Microsoft was down 429 yesterday, up 159 this morning. Pfizer up a dime. HPQ down 98 cents, lost 61 cents yesterday with uh, Warren Buffett's uh, Berkshire Hathaway selling off 5.5 million shares at about $29. The stock is under some pressure today at 27.35. Alphabet, uh, Google up 25 cents. Uh, Amazon <clears throat> up 34. NVIDIA is up 371. It was up 615 yesterday. So looks like we're up almost 10 bucks here uh, in uh, 24 hours. Now at 4. 58. Unity down 37. AI is up a nickel here. It was down 33 yesterday. Adobe unchanged. Uh, spider um, Spiders are up 166. Uh, Qs are up 105. And Netflix is down 89 cents. Lost $22 yesterday on Netflix. Down 89 cents this morning. That is the story, and I'm sticking to it for the moment. We have, uh, as usual, a lot of... Uh, uh, Things happening in Washington, uh, you can read it for yourself, see what you think about it all. A uh, lot of infighting right now in various sectors of the Congress. We'll see how that plays itself out. The European Union has raised their bank rate by a quarter point, and that is the big story of the day. We'll now see how this affects the United States with the Federal Reserve uh, in the next few weeks. How are they going to react are they going to raise rates in the U.S. again? Because inflation is not walking away. Uh, headline here, Volkswagen, spot, speaking of Volkswagen, reportedly set to cut jobs at an EV factory in Germany, story goes. Speaking of uh, uh, Germany and EVs, uh, I've mentioned this before. I'll remind you. Ontario, California. Uh, Ontario, California. Ontario, Canada. <laughs> not California. Ontario in Canada, the province, uh, made a deal with uh, the federal government of Canada and Volkswagen to offer them a tax incentive reason to build a massive battery plant in Ontario. Something like $240 million in tax incentives were given. I'm kind of wondering if Volkswagen is laying people off in Germany because the jobs are going to be transferred to Canada. I, I can't say. Other than that, what it is, is that uh, Germany is finding that EV sales aren't going as well, or the German economy, as weak as it is, as I've been reporting it lately, it, this is one of the side effects. This, this could be the reason. We'll see what's going on. All right. Adam was saying to me that uh, ATIP is indicating uh, 1042 in the pre-market. That's what he's he's looking at. I, I'm looking at no trading uh, of any significance here today. We closed at 8.93 on uh, on uh, last night's market, and I don't have any um, I don't have any news on it. I don't have any I don't have any report of news on it. Uh, let's see if there's a press release from the company here. Nope, nothing. Uh, there's no no news um, at all about uh, the stocks. So I, I don't know what the story is on ATIP. Uh, 893 was last night's uh, last trade. 39, 31 cent gain. The the uh, one year range now that the stock has been uh, rolled back, $6 for the low, $62 for the high. So you can see how far down it's come. 959 is the last indicated trade, but that's four shares of volume. I, I'm not going to not buying it. Uh, let's uh, wait and see what the uh, what the real market looks like. Now, if the if Adam has got it on his uh, pre market, maybe that's uh, what he's showing on his bid ask. Does anyone else have a quote uh, just to kind of back up Adam's uh, uh, quote here? Uh, what do your machines show? The rest of you out there, ATIP, do us a favor. Tell us what the quote is that you see. Amy, number sixty six thumbs ups. Good morning. Uh, Adam says that is the ask price, only one lid up, no bid price on Tasty. Adam, uh, normally, if either price is not red or green, Tasty, that means there are no orders. Charlie, I see ATIP at 871. So, so far, that's what we have. We, we really don't have, uh, we really don't get any action on ATIP in pre markets. Uh, historically, it really doesn't, doesn't do much. 
we are 15 minutes away from opening. I wouldn't be surprised in the next 10 minutes that bids and asks slowly filter in, but we'll see. Uh, Matthew says, I've got 828 on E-Trade. BW, Think or Swim has uh, Spire at a 552 bid. <coughs> there you go. Thank you for that. Uh, generally, pre-market quotes <coughs> for most of these stocks, we can't count on them. Yeah, Apple, sure, Tesla. You can you can get a pretty good indication of what's going on there. But even then, haven't haven't we seen so many indications so many times where it looks like the stock is going to be up several dollars on the opening, only to find it's only up fifty cents. And other times, stocks look to be down seven or eight dollars, are only down fifty cents or a buck in actual trading. So we got to wait for the opening to see what's really happening. BW says. ATIP quotes are a bit of 815 uh, up to an ask of 998. That is a massive spread. And that is quite normal for a thinly traded stock. <coughs> Bobby Atkinson, 959 ATIP up 104. So, yeah, it's as wide as a Mack truck. So, we'll wait for the opening in 14 minutes to really see what's going on. Um, there it is. David Flores is saying that I wish we had refilled the strategic oil reserve when oil was under 70, but I guess 50 is even better. Well, there you have it. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if the U.S. bought any oil under 70 or not. No idea. Uh, it was under 70 for quite some time. Um, these these runs uh, that we've had, it's now been, what, two, three months of slow uptick on oil. That can be reversed in a week. Uh, it would not take much. Uh, Kaiser Trip says Gesund, Gesundheit, Jen. Uh, there you go, Jen. That was, that was a cough, she said. Uh, no cell says uh, laugh about Uncle Bruce. Cough, thank you. Uncle Bruce calls that normal. Uh, there you go, everybody. What can I say? Crazy normal. Uh, welcome all to the, to the show. We have 13 minutes to go until we uh, start trading. That's the uh, that's the story. I'm sticking to that. We're up 193 on the Dow, it looks like. Um, let's see if we can... Uh, Re reload every reload everything here we go uh yeah 191 on the Dow 25 point gain on s p and almost 80 on s uh, on nasdaq that's a half a point across all markets so they're looking good um lagarde the head of the ecb says we can't say that we're at the peak on interest rates we cannot say it she's right she's absolutely correct that rates might go higher uh on the uh, 10 year u.s treasury we're sitting at 4.229, uh, not much going on there. And on the U.S. dollar this morning, the euro is lower, 106.90, and the pound is down to 124.5. Both are about a third to 0.4 of a percentage point lower against the American dollar today. The yen is at 147, also off a third of a penny. Uh, other than that, the markets were higher in Asia overnight, and in Europe right now, they're up half a point to one and a quarter points, depending on which market you're looking at. A lot of 1% gainers in Europe today. Uh, that's helping the Dow with a half a point to a almost 0.6 point increase on the three big indexes, the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. There you go, kids. That's the story, uh, so, so as I see it. Um, uh, David Floria says, hey, hey, can you please tell us ahead of time when Jen shows up? I'm on a tight schedule here. Uh, Kaiser, ATIP physical therapy um, uh, markets, 893 US. Uh, last update, September 13th. No trades pre market per trading view. Thank you, Kaiser Trip. Not surprising to see it uh, doing that. Not much of anything, to be honest. There you go. We have 71 thumbs ups. I appreciate it. There's 153 of you here. So uh, 81 of you right now are officially able to be classified as slackers for not hitting the thumbs up button for the guy who's coming to you live all the way from Stockholm. I don't know what more a guy has to do. I'm trying. Uh, thank you all who have given us a thumbs up. We appreciate you. Uh, we love it. And if you're able to hit the thumbs up button, please do so. Give us a little boost. Uh, maybe we can get through the 100 mark here pretty quickly. Thank you very much. David Flores, I'm here, buddy. 72. Beach Boys here. Uncle Bruce, are you uh, having zero Coke here for real? How does Antigen allow that blasphemy? Wait, that's what I'm drinking right now. Oh, yes. There's blasphemy everywhere. 
I got to tell you the story. Did you tell uh, what you had for lunch today? Yeah, I haven't yet. This is a can, okay, of Coke Zero. Inside this can is Coke Zero that I poured from a big bottle into this can because I like to have this little container to drink out of. There is no Diet Coke in Stockholm. There's no Diet Coke in Copenhagen. There's no Diet Coke in Dortmund. A diet, caffeine-free Diet Coke. The last time I saw that was London. London in the UK was the last time I they saw McDonald's didn't have Diet Coke. Caffeine. Didn't have the other day we walked by the McDonald's in Copenhagen. We they had a coffee. sign. We were, we were going to get a Big Mac meal. Uh, they were out of Coke Zero. They, they sold out. You got to drink the sugary stuff. We ended up with a milkshake. We thought we're going to go. We're going to go all the way. And we got a chocolate shake. It was delicious in Copenhagen. What can I say? Splair, I'm now number 74. Uh, neat, neat, neat. Thank you, Splair. Yeah, uh, Coca-Cola price. I don't understand something. I, I don't get it. In Calgary, we can't find caffeine-free. We can't find Diet Coke from time to time. How how in the world is Coca-Cola equaling their uh, projected numbers? If you're not selling your merchandise at the grocery store level, how is it that you're how, how are you making money? You got it. Your sales have got to be down. I, don't, I just don't get it. At lunch today, uh, Jen and I, uh, we went out for a little walk before this show. We came upon a beautiful park just a block or so away from here. And at the end of the park was this uh, restaurant. It's a TGI Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> TGI Fridays, and they were doing a booming business, a booming business. And uh, so we had a bite to eat there. I had to drink Pepsi Max. I said, we got a Diet Coke available? So, uh, no, but we have Pepsi Max. I said, is it got sugar in it? No, no. Okay, I'll, I'll drink that. You, you can't find diet anything around here. It's unbelievable. I, I, I don't know how these guys make money. Uh, lame duck. Uncle Bruce, I should treat my Amazon roll-up as separate contracts. Buy my puts back, sell my put for a gain, then buy back my covered call 140 and raise and sell for a gain. Uh, yes, you can definitely do that. Uh, so even with Gondor trades, yes, you can take. Yeah, the platform will, will let you do it or not. But yes, absolutely. Uh, Flint Creek, having watched people die of drinking phosphorus laden sodas, I will never drink another dark soda. Maria Powell, 89, and good morning all. Thank you for the thumbs up, Maria. Uh, BW, uh, U.S. dollar is spiking up to 105.27 and dropped a little trying to eat back up there. Currently at 105.06, had been at 104.8. Buckle up, folks. Rate hikes are inbound. Pauses are not in the cards, in my opinion. There you go. Um, like I said, the uh, the U.S. dollar uh, is gaining. Uh, the pound is at 124.5, and the euro is 106. 87 under pressure. A uh, beach boy, a uh, tell manager, it's time to short Coca Cola. Lame duck, iron condor, you got it, buddy. A uh, fool of a took. I am number 90, Bruce, on your thumbs up meter here. Uh, you're only 10 away from 100, and then you're on the way higher. So there we are. Thank you all for helping out, popping in those thumbs ups right now. The slackers are coming in. Strickland is coming out shortly with the pink slips. Don't get caught by Strickland. He never had hair. Just, just so you know, between you, Fool took. Uh, this is my first week riding under Iron Condors. I'm loving it so far. Oh, there you go. There you go. Welcome to the Iron Condor Show. Um, I think it's going to be a good couple of years for option riders. A really good couple of years. Um, I think a number of you are going to be able to alter your lives dramatically from. Uh, hoping to retire with enough to retiring with more than you thought you were going to retire with that's step one two many of you are probably going to quit working for a living for someone else a lot sooner than you ever thought possible or you never thought possible it's going to happen i'm pretty stumped stumped and spoke about that for so many of you um you'll be in, going to be able to be self-employed option writers and generating income it's a superpower that you've all inherited through this channel that 99.9 percent .9 of the market does not uh, seem to want to learn how to do and that is true because you know 
when you try to tell somebody what it is you're doing on this channel with your buddy uncle bruce and the other viewers over here nobody believes you <laughs> no one believes a word you say and they look at it and go um that, that sounds too good to be true that uh you're making money on stock you already have by selling something and then uh, buying it back uh, uh, later. Uh, uh, so, something doesn't add up here. Uh, I don't quite understand. Uh, yeah, it just, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't do that. Uh, but you, you, good luck to you. They'll, they'll, they'll say, you, you keep up the good work. And uh, when you're on unemployment and destitute and living in the street, um, I'll throw a couple of pennies in your cup as I'm walking by you. That, that's what your friends are probably saying to you, um, most likely. Uh, you, 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 you proved them wrong. 93 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're going comments for members only. Thank you, those of you who are members of this channel. Thanks for renewing your membership. Uh, thank you for upgrading your membership to Gold Bagel level. There you go, guys. Um, joining me for those uh, trade alerts and uh appreciate you having having you here today it's uh, great to have you here as always uh, fantastic aren't condors a protected species uh, beach boy wanted to know uh big b's here uh, good morning uncle bruce oh good morning big b welcome to the show thank you to those of you who have been uh, no letting the world know how long you've been a member of this channel it's uh, appreciated when you do that too it tells viewers out there how long it has been worth your while to be a member of this uh, channel at the chillin' level or gold bagel level. Um, there's only one reason you're members. You're making money. It's as simple as that. You wouldn't be a member otherwise. Uh, bagel Babe says, I had someone tell me they would never do that because they didn't want to pay taxes on earnings. Isn't it incredible how many people use that excuse to not make money? I isn't that... Is that the most ridiculous thing you ever hear all the time? Oh yeah, I, I can't do that. I'll have, I'll have to pay way more in taxes. <laughs> no, no, sir. Uh, I appreciate, boss. Uh, I know you want to take me from fifty thousand a year to one hundred fifty thousand a year, but I have to reject. I have to say no to that raise, because if you pay me one hundred fifty thousand a year, I'm going to have to pay more in taxes, and I, I don't want to support my government. I would really rather not support the government at that level i'll just pay the taxes at the fifty thousand level and complain about how poor i am I, i'm going to I, well, thank you though for the offer um really appreciate it do you know any billionaires that complain about how much money they pay in taxes uh do you know how many people billionaires employ so they don't have to pay a lot of money in taxes you know when you have it you can afford to find ways to not pay as much as others it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. A splare. All right, y'all. I'm getting today a new a gerbil for my lonely one. Um, I don't know what to think about gerbils or splare. A uh, fool of a took. Imagine if someone said, I'm not going to get a job because I don't want to pay taxes. <laughs> Beach Boy, Bagel Babe. Yep, I heard that as well. As Barnum said, there's a sucker born every minute. Exactly. Uh, Splitter saying, I'm wishing you all a successful and relaxed trading day tomorrow again for a show. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I'm sure we'll be on tomorrow. Splitter, keep it going, buddy. Um, and a way to go on that journey. Um, thank you all for joining me. We are one minute away from Larry Titus, hopefully being here and ringing the bell. Uh, we should be up and running here and getting this market going. We have 94 thumbs ups just before the bell is being run. If you can find that thumbs up button, hit it now. Now, 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 please, while Larry gets ready to hit the bells. And let's break 100 thumbs ups to start this program off with the second half of the show. Welcome all to the party. It's great to have you here. Uh, we're curious to see what this market has in store for us. My, 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 we lost 70 points yesterday. What is the market going to do today? That is the question. Dow showing a 200 point market gain on the uh, pre market. Uh, let's find out. Here's the. Uh, the coveted bells from larry titus thanks buddy appreciate you doing that bagel babe i'm going to be so upset when i'm paying 40 percent in taxes on a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar income gosh darn it that is sarcasm i hear you there charlie I, I just tell people i practice the dark arts of stock market trading it's all magic 
Beach Boy. Larry the Bells. Yeah, baby. Splair, sounds great. Especially thanks for all the helpful news today. Thanks, Larry. Rock on. Yes, sir, says Splair. I was watching uh, I was watching uh, one of those uh, Instagram shorts uh, last night, I think it was. And it was this guy who uh, has an iPhone. And he comes up to people and he says, oh, what do you do for a living? And, and he comes up to clearly well-to-do people in well-to-do areas of the world. And uh, he came up to this uh, Lamborghini um, car, really nice looking car. And there were, there were two um, rather attractive gals in the car, one driving and one a passenger. And he said to her, well, what do you do for a living? You've got such a nice car. I love your car. What do you do for a living? And she says, oh, I, I, uh, I trade in the market. He goes, oh, you, you trade in the stock market? And, and she, yeah. And then off she went. I was wondering, I wonder if she's a viewer of this channel. Uh, I wonder what her name is. Is that Bagel Babe by, by chance? Is that Would that be Bagel Babe? I don't know. I'm just curious. Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, Bobby Atkins said, I complain about the something. I complain about the something when working overtime for my employer. So I went to a cash only second job for my overtime, not my employer's overtime. There you go. A uh, farmless. I was down 2000 ish all time in, uh, in August. I'm now up 2000 after starting iron condors in the middle of the month. Way to go. My man, I uh, swear. I know that videos, uh, lovely. Those videos are lovely. What do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? <laughs> I, I trade stock. Uh, I write options. I do iron condors with Uncle Bruce. Oh, that's how you drive that car. Oh, that's nice. Hey, we're open, kids. Uh, we're up 159 on the down now. Um, 20 points gained on S&P, 57 on NASDAQ. 0 0.40, 0 0.44, and 0.46 of a percentage point for those three indexes. And rising oil up 135 a barrel. 89.87 is the stock market. That's the price of West Texas oil okay uh uncle bruce what is wrong with unity i i don't know i don't think there's anything wrong with unity but maybe the stock is down a little bit is that frustrating uh it was uh it was uh, me from the future bagel baby saying that that video of those two gals in the lamborghini that was me in the future there you go pretty cool I saw another video on instagram last night i was showing it to jen a guy is uh, walking out of his back door of his house. He walks down a little pathway, goes through this wooden gate, goes into his garage. <coughs> walks into his garage, and you can see all of a sudden there's a car parked in his garage. Here from the from the back, you can tell uh, instantly. I can oh that's a DeLorean. He's got a DeLorean in his garage, and then and then as he's scanning the back of the car, I noticed. It's a time machine, DeLorean. It's all decked out. And he comes along the side and he opens up the, the, the front uh, trunk, the frunk. And inside are all these props from the movie. And he walks around the front of the car and shows the inside of the trunk again. And you see this sheet of paper that says, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired, McFly. Uh, then he goes into the car. He opens up the door. He lifts up the door. And um, he puts his hand on the console where the the switch is, and he turns the switch and pushes it backwards, and you hear the choo -choo, and he moves his camera to the time the time uh, meter, the three times where you are, where you were, where you're going, uh, and you hear that sound chunk chunk. It, it lights up, and then he pans back between the back the two seats, and you see the flux capacitor going. A great little video. It was like a minute long, and you're just looking at this guy taking you into a DeLorean ready for, for time travel. I thought that was pretty cool. I really liked it. Nazareth, Unity enacted a stupid policy change, and the market is reacting to it. My company is completely reevaluating our partnership with it now. Touch grass. Unity wants to start a charging service for any game created with their engine. People don't like that. Bobby, bye, bye. BB, my, bye. what's that? BB, my HPQ 33, 77, right for 21, rewrote 29 for 103. So written new contracts for more money. There you go. There, there you go, by the way. There, well done. That's exactly what you do. SoFi is 890, by the way. We're up a dime on SoFi, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Let me let me just triple check that. No, we're at 901 on SoFi. Pardon me. 
SoFi is 901 up 21 cents right now. I've just updated my uh, my big ass iPad, which is a little off the mark here. Uh, the Dow right now, um, as best as I can uh, see it, seems to be ahead by 160 points. S&P is up 20 and NASDAQ up 53. The oil up 129 a barrel. Um, we got uh, we got uh, GameStop up seven cents at 1788. We're going to see if we can break 18 today. So if I had nine dollars, Apple is unchanged. Uh, Netflix down 850. AI up 60 cents. Nvidia up 330. Tesla up 37 cents. Rocket Lab is up four cents. Matterport up four cents. Smart Rent up seven and a half. Even even over at Owens Corning up two bucks. ATIP up 31 to 893. Unity down eight cents at thirty six seventy four uh, in the last week from that thirty eight thirty nine range. Uh, last uh, two weeks ago it was just short of forty bucks, and back on uh, July nineteenth was forty eight fifty. Thirty six seventy five on Unity right now. Google down four. Moderna down a buck. Cisco down fifteen. Pfizer's up twenty three. IBM is up forty three cents. HPQ down a dollar, 27.27, as I was saying, 27.27, uh, um, down a dollar eight. Microsoft up 198, ME up uh, 3.6 cents. Um, Amazon is 144, 61, up down 24 cents. Spire unchanged, Home Depot up buck and a half, Vanek up 109, Adobe down five dollars, Goldman up three, make it 340, Boeing up 130, Meta. Up 290 to 308 now. Target da, up a dime. JP Morgan up 148. Costco up 110. Walmart up 13. Disney up 64. American Airlines up 13 cents. Trying a little recovery at 1344. DraftKings up 54. AMC is 881, uh, up 57 cents uh, so far today. The low of 705 was set not too long ago on AMC. There's where we're at there. For now, 150 point gain on the Dow at this moment in time. All right. There you have it. Uh, what can I say? Um, Mark Gibson is saying, Uncle Bruce, I sold uh, AI uh, covered calls. Uh, <clears throat> I sold, I, I'm guessing, he's, it looks like he sold eight $40 contracts for October 20 at $7.29. He bought them back at 25 cents. Um, that's 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 uh, that's pretty good then. Uh, that's kind of like Julia Roberts money. Uh, uh, that's a seven o four profit, seven hundred four dollars times eight contracts. That's kind of like Julia Roberts money. That's that's pretty good there, Mark. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, keep writing, keep writing and writing and writing. Let those let those uh, gamblers take all the risk for you, man. That's nice, Charlie. Uh, uh, Uncle Bruce, what cover call right would you be looking at at HPQ? Well, I'd be thinking January's uh, for timing. Um, uh, let's see now. Where are we at on the stock here? Uh, we're at 27.27. So, you know, 29s, uh, uh, something like that. Maybe 29s at 30, uh, 30 for January, February, or March. Uh, out of the money, as much premium as you can get, and make the market take a 10% run before you have to worry about the problem of a, of a running market. Look at it that way. It goes to 25 a share. Uh, these 29s and 30s will crap out. You'll buy them for less than half what you sold them for. And then you'll write 28s for January, February, or March. And just keep taking money off the table. Be compensated for a dip if there's going to be a bigger one. Be compensated. Don't worry about an upside run to, uh, to the stratosphere. That's my that's my guess on it. Uh, check it out. See what it looks like. We have 107 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. You came through for me. We're into triple digits on the thumbs ups meter. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's a pre it's appreciated. Uh, we're up a penny on Rocket Lab. 21 cent gain on SoFi. 901. Down a penny on GameStop. Nothing much there. Uh, Matterport uh, is up six and a half. 23 and me at 112 up three cents. Spire unchanged. ATIP up 31. Smart rent up. 2.5 cents we got apple up 81 we've got goldman up 274 uh cisco down 18 tesla up a buck 89 now coming on arc innovation is up 52 microsoft up 254 pfizer's up 16 cents 
HPQ down 101. Alphabet, uh, the old Google, up uh, 61 cents. Amazon down 9. NVIDIA up 340. Unity now green up 15 cents. AI up 30. Adobe down just a buck. Netflix down 550. That is the story, and I'm sticking to it, kids. See how this all plays out for you. Okay, 893 on ATIP. I don't have any news. It's just higher. Um, is it a short squeeze? Is that is that the story uh, with so little stock out there? Um, I don't know about that. I don't. I honestly don't know if that's true. Uh, okay. And SoFi nine oh three now on your SoFi. This is approaching the high of the day of nine oh five, and uh, we're we're climbing here. Uh, the Dow is now up one forty eight, S and P up twenty two, and Nasdaq up seventy, half a percentage point on two of those markets. Very nice. Okay, um, oil 89.86 up 134. SoFi 9.06 new high. SoFi new high 9.06. Go SoFi go. 9.07. There's another one. It's coming on, baby. Giddy up. Time to make my viewers rich beyond belief. Let's go to 20 bucks a share. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, Nazareth says that the last run-up for GameStop, I sold some November 27s for four fifty. dollars bought them back yesterday for $0.50 cents average and a $4 profit a contract. Uh, 66 contracts uh, ready for another right. Very nice. 66 times $400. That is called making day money. That's called making at the job money not bad at all i love this keep up the good work there man nice nice move <clears throat> take that cash and keep going mm. you gotta love it option writers well done 1789 on gamestop we're up eight cents we're climbing we're up 22 on SoFi here, 902, 905 range. So nice little start for SoFi. We're up 116 on Apple. We're climbing over here. Um, AI is up 17. NVIDIA up 394. Tesla up 169. A uh, couple of green star, a couple of green arrows popping up here and there. Google up 56. Microsoft up 280. <clears throat> up 79, 80 cents on Vanek Vectors. We're up two bucks on Goldman. Dollar gain on Boeing. 255 gain on Facebook. JP Morgan up 122, Costco up 91. Okay, keep it coming, guys. These markets would like to go higher. The question is, will they? <clears throat> that is the thing. <clears throat> yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, lots to watch, lots to follow. Never a dull moment. Hawkeye is here with a thumbs up number one eleven. Thank you, Hawkeye for hitting that thumbs up button for us uh, it is much appreciated keep those thumbs ups coming in you guys uh, the more the merrier ccl is popping says jj ccl is popping there you go carnival cruise lines up 54 cents Norwegian was up a little bit too. They both got an upgrade today. I would not be a believer in that to any great extent. I'm a bit uh, mm, skeptical is the word. Yeah, I think that's the word. A little skeptical of the uh, upside of cruise stocks. Mm. If airlines are already commenting, like we heard yesterday from American Airlines, we heard from Spirit too. They're already talking about how higher oil and gas prices are affecting their returns and their um, their uh, traffic estimates for the fall are not as good as first thought. American went from an 85, 90 cent profit per share estimate to 2025. That's not good. What about cruise lines? What's the number one expense for cruise lines? Fuel. Those big ships need a lot of fuel to move. Um, fuel's gone up on them, big time. Now, wages have gone up as well, and they have done their part. 
to try to raise prices, but they're just upsetting their passengers. Uh, the diehard cruisers out there are not a happy camper. They're not happy campers at all. Really upset with lower service levels and higher costs. It's not going over very well. That might bite them this winter. Um, Charlie, uh, Adobe earnings after the bell, I believe. JJ short the carnival. Uh, no, I would just stay away from it. Luca, been learning quite a lot on iron condors lately. Um, I lost a grand on NVIDIA a couple of weeks back. Made it back with uh, interests in spiders. Uh, well done, sir. Well done there, Luca. Uh, you're, you never give up, never surrender. Exactly. Uh, 146 gain on the Dow. Um, 21 on S&P, 71 on NASDAQ. We're holding gains about a half a percentage point, kind of, sort of. Sort of, kind of, uh huh. Um, yep, GameStop up five cents, uh, SoFi up 18, Apple up 127. Okay, there you go, guys. Giddy up the old uh, chicken tax from 1960. We talked about that earlier today. It's funny how certain tariffs never ever go away, it's truly amazing. Um, don't forget, I mentioned earlier, Berkshire Hathaway has sold five and a half million shares of uh, HPQ, Hewlett Packard Enterprises. Um, they still own 115 and a half million shares, 11.7% of the company, but they did offload 5.5 million and brought in about $160 million at about $29 a share. The stock is trading right now in the 27 neighborhood um hpq 2738 right now down 95 cents the low was 2680 a recovery already of 58 cents from the low so uh, those of you who have written calls on hpq you may find that you're up a nice little profit right now on calls you wrote a while ago you may want to close those out and issue a new set of calls for january february march in the 2930 neighborhood and taken more cash if possible why not out of the money calls are is what you want to do all right matthew i gotta i gotta go folks have a happy trading day arm goes public on the global exchange that are priced on the high end something to watch out for and jj i read somewhere that carnival has 35 billion in total debt that uh, wouldn't surprise me um the cruise lines the three big boys in carnival Norwegian and Royal Caribbean, I think uh, they might have uh, 100 billion. Carnival might be more than that. Um, Royal Caribbean might be 40 billion as well. Uh, Norwegian, good 20 plus billion. Yeah, they're 100 billion in the hole, and the costs of carrying that debt is rising. It's rising, and it's uh, bad news. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you take a 1% higher cost factor for interest charges on 100 billion in debt it's a billion a year more in debt payments interest 100 billion more <coughs> a year uh, that's 20 million a week 20 million a week more in interest charges for a one percent rise in interest rates these cruise lines have debt maturing from four or five years ago every few months that have to be re-rolled over into current rates so they're going to go up three to six to seven points on millions of dollars every so many months. They are getting these massive increases in interest expenses on their old maturing debt. It's not good. I'm telling you, it's going to be a bad five years. Mm. Uh, Deuce Kabuski, uh, Uncle Bruce, I asked you a couple of years ago how long growth stocks can stall out. You said years. I hate it when you're right. Number 115 on the thumbs up. Dude face, uh, I'm number 116, just so you know. I'm there for you, Bruce. Yes, uh, interest rates can also stall out quite a while at a higher level as well. So can inflation, unfortunately. And the compounding effect of that is never ending. It is, it is just a relentless, relentless attack on free business, on enterprising, enterprising individuals. A lot of companies get... Uh, get the heebie-jeebies and start doing layoffs it's not good okay uh georgia's governor now is this the state of georgia or georgia in the country I, i'm guessing this is the state of georgia uh 
Governor's Georgia declares a state of emergency over inflation and raises and pauses the gas tax, pauses it. But will that push up gas prices even further? Because gas companies are not stupid. They see the state pausing a gas tax. Let's say it's 40 cents a gallon. They'll, they'll cut prices by 25 cents a gallon to keep 15 cents in their pocket. They're not dummies, you know. They'll, they'll say thanks for the handout. Uh, I'll tell you. Lame Duck, how, does, uh, how, does, how do cruise lines make money, Lame Duck wants to know. I watched a documentary on Netflix, and the expense is amazing. Fool, fuel and food and everything else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the margins. I can tell you that when uh, our friends at Royal Caribbean were having the best money-making years of their existence, right up until... 2018 2019 Royal Caribbean was making more money than they had than they had ever made before their profit margin net net profit margin 4% that's what they were getting so they would bring in $100 in revenue and after all the expenses they had a $4 profit for every $100 40 bucks a thousand can you imagine Getting paid at work uh, $1,000 every week and getting to keep 40 of it because that's your profit margin. The rest of the expenses, you'd feel pretty poor with only 40 bucks to last you seven days. That's 52000 a year. You get 40 a week. Not, not good, right? Uh, these these companies, uh, Royal Caribbean, uh, they made a, a, a profit. I'm trying to remember the number now. Um, their stock... Oh, pardon me. I think the stock of Royal Caribbean reached an all-time high of about 130 bucks a share for like a few weeks. A few weeks only did it get there. Kind of was 110, 115. It took a shot to 130, 35, then back to 100. Uh, and then, you know, the bottom fell out in 2020. Anyway, um, at the time they were trading at 130, they were earning a profit of 650 a share and they were trading at 20 times earnings 650 a share times 20 is 130 dollars you see um within a year by 2020 and then 2021 they were losing 20 dollars a share from making six to losing 20 okay right now they're breaking even at best, uh, they they had a profit last quarter, but losses prior to that, uh, and their expenses keep going up right now. Um, the costs of being in business in 2019, four years ago, versus the costs of being in business today, completely different. They didn't owe 40 to 45 billion in debt four years ago. Whatever debt they had, and I'm going to guess it was 10 billion. It was financed at 3%, maybe 3% interest. Today, 40, 45 billion in debt. Their average interest payment, I'm going to guess, is 7 to 9% and rising. That's, that's going up dramatically. So you're going to pay 9% interest on 40 billion. You're going to pay 3.6 billion a year in interest. Divide that by 12, 3.6 billion. That's 300 million a month. Divide that by 30 days a, a month, 10, 10, million, 10 million a day. $10 million a day in interest is what Royal Caribbean is paying in interest charges for the debt they're carrying. It's not paying off the debt. It's just carrying it. That's all they're doing. They're not paying it down at all. 10 million a day, seven days a week. So you think about how many sh ships they got. Think about how many people get on the ships. Then you figure out how much money per person per day do they need to pay interest charges. And that's why to buy a rum and coke on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship has got to be, what, 10 bucks for a rum and coke. You want a... a, a, a Glen, what do you want? One of those Shivas, Shivas Scotch whiskey drinks, one of those higher end. Those are 15, 20 bucks a shot. You want one of those nice little 
zombie drinks with four ounces of liquor in it, they, they got to be $25. You will pay dearly if you're on a cruise ship right now at Royal Caribbean. Casinos, uh, the slot machines are as tight as they've ever been. You'll never win money there. Um, the uh, the food the costs of the special restaurants, out of control. Uh, they're charging more in tips because they're trying not to raise their pay to their employees all that much. They're trying to say to their bankers in New York, hey, look, we have third world country employees most of the time, most for the most part on our ships. We only give them 4% pay raises, but what they're not saying to the bankers is, oh yeah, we've raised our mandatory gratuity fees up to 20% for every drink. So if that's a $10 Ryan Coke, it's a $12 Ryan Coke because you got to pay the $2 gratuity. You can't not pay it. If you're going to especially restaurants, 20% gratuity. If you're, you got a cabin, everybody has to have a cabin. You have a per day gratuity charge that has gone from 12 14 dollars to now 20 to 22 dollars per person per day for the length of the cruise so if you're on a 10-day cruise and you're paying 22 bucks a day in tips that's 220 bucks in mandatory tips each person husband and wife 440 dollars in tips you bought a drink package for a hundred dollars a day per person that's a thousand dollars each plus a two hundred dollar gratuity charge each mandatory on top of your cruise fare good luck getting the cheap cruise out there uh, that is why these guys are in trouble they're, they're they're not attracting as much money as they you think they are it's not working out it's unbelievable anyway so an update on my netflix iron condor says dude ah, it's now a butterfly or an iron or iron butterfly I decided to act after the CFO yesterday came out with low expectations ahead of earnings. I took in another 436 in credit. Uh, Kent, I just ordered less than 16. I feel so left out by not understanding iron condors. A kid is doing great. He's working so hard. Every day is golf, gym, school, then more golf. Uh, we're going to have ourselves, I predict, on this channel, a direct link to a professional PGA Tour member in a few years. And I'm pretty excited. Uh, I cannot wait to get an invite to go to the Masters to watch that kid play because that kid is going to make it to the Masters. And I'll be there cheering. Uh, Kent, uh, ju uh, ju I'm just praying for the best. I'm loving this so much. Oh, this is fun. Lame duck. The, this doc was before COVID, by the way. Um, this doc was before uh, COVID. Oh, the documentary, uh, How Do Cruise Lines Make Money? This is before COVID. Isn't that something? After COVID. So even worse. Dude, now I'm at uh, I'm at the 415 with a put and a call sold. Okay, so um, this is on uh, on Netflix. All right. Uh, Netflix is 40422. Uh, I have wings at 437 and 400. So that's the range I'm hoping for September 29 expiry. So we're, we're at four, uh, 404. And he's got a 400 to 437 range. So if the market wants to do a little pop today, that will take the heat off those puts. Deep value options. Norwegian Cruise Line is the is in Keith's, Keith Gill's portfolio, by the way. Uh, JJ, remember, kids, uh, cruise casinos operate in international waters. Completely unregulated. They'll never disclose their slot machine payout percentages. They don't have to. When they come into port, as soon as they're approaching international waters, cruise lines shut down the cruise the uh, slot machines. You can't play a slot machine in Florida waters, Bahamian waters, only in international waters where no one says a word. Beach Boy, PGA, meet and greet Uncle Bruce Kent. How about that? Wouldn't that be great to have a meet and greet at a PGA Tour event with our friend, the pro golfer? Or how about, how about in Phoenix at that Waste Management Open uh, oh, with that crazy, what is we it, the, the crazy 16th hole, 16th. that par three? We could yell at him from the stance. He'll get a kick out of that. Uh, your mom writes great options. <laughs> Iron condors to the moon. 
maybe I can get him to, to wear one of those logos on his on his you know on his shirt with all the sponsors, you know, stock markets with Bruce. A bagel. You know, bagel. or a bagel, you know. Bagel logo. Uh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Uh you know, he'll win he'll win a tournament and the uh, the uh, reporter will say, Well, what, what was your what's your inspiration to uh, to be such a, to turn on your golf game to such a high level? Oh, it's gotta be all those great people at stock markets with Bruce, because I tell you, my mom found his channel on YouTube and ever since She's been writing contracts, got me on the tour. You guys are crazy not to watch Stock Markets with Bruce on YouTube. I can't wait for that promo, that little shout out. That's going to be great. Am I? Am I? Am I going on a little bit too much on that? I, I don't know. I'm not. You know, I, no, I'm not going to hold my breath. It's all. It's all good. It's all good. Um, Option Nomads. This morning, I'm exploring writing an Iron Condor on spx the premiums are much higher compared to spy with lower fees as well curious if anyone knows of the downside seems like a no-brainer to write on spx uh, my only advice is uh go you know go, go way out on the spread you know keep an eye on the charts and you know stay way out use time as your weapon to bring you a nice credit from further out and that way you'll be closing up the position well before these contracts expire with a nice profit. As I explain my myself to you what to do as I hiccup at the same time, that is the dedication of this YouTuber to all of you out there. I will forego and, and tolerate hiccuping to tell you what to do. 119 thumbs up. So you guys are incredible. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for these phenomenal, phenomenal thumbs ups. I tell you, I, I am stoked for you guys. Uh, keep up the good work. Yeah, it looks like there is a Class 16 that has gone through my system here. Someone picked up. I think I know who picked up Class 16 here. Uh, it's official. Uh, class 16 has been acquired this morning just a few minutes ago. And uh, I have a feeling that someone's going to be joining the party, pal, pretty quick here because I think once this individual... Kent is the name of the individual. Once Kent figures out uh, what condors are all about, uh, something tells me that uh, Kent will be uh, will be notifying us of a few uh, condor positions that are underway right now, along with many others of you. Uh, congratulations, all of you out there. Whether you do them or not, it's all good. It, it, the key here is to know about them. I want you to know about condors and how they work to add more knowledge to your noggin just you got to know more than the other guy it's as simple as that you just need to know more than the competition bobby atkinson a kent's kid will have to watch your disco dis 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 discovery this dis discob i can't even pronounce it your stock market reruns with uncle bruce charlie um <laughs> he needs to market his own golf driver Name it the Iron Condor. Uh, he could be sponsored by the Stock Markets with Bruce channel. See, um, how do I how do I do so? How do I golf so well? I, I use this Iron Condor. Uh, where'd you get the name for Iron Condor? Oh, it's an incredible YouTube channel that my mom put me onto. Stock Markets with Bruce with the most incredible YouTubers on the planet. You should see these Gold Bagel members. Wow, um, there you go. Maybe I could make a land a deal uh, somehow that when the Iron Condor goes on sale, that all Gold Bagel members get a special discount being Gold Bagel members of this channel because it's called the Iron Condor. I don't know. I just, you know, just I'm just wondering. You know. <sighs> Isn't it great? It's so much fun. Uh, so much fun. I'm so looking forward to this young man's future. Can't wait to see him, uh, see him and mom and dad. Uh, hopefully this coming winter we'll, we'll be down again. In the spring, Jen says. In the spring, in the spring. Yes, indeed. We're looking forward to a revisit to California. We have 124 thumbs ups on this channel today. Thank you all so very, very much. If you are making money in the under iron condor market, if you are making money writing options, if you like writing options, please hit that thumbs up button and give us a little bit of a momentum boost. We thank you all so much. Uh, Beach Boy, Auntie Jen, why is Uncle Bruce babbling? Why am I babbling? I don't know. Uh, I don't think it is a Diet Coke. I think you're hopped up on sugar. Hopped up on sugar. Is there something else in here? I don't know. 
Maybe you're just excited about your travel. Maybe that's what it is. All stoked up. We're uh, we're enjoying the trip so far, as as we had expected we would, and uh, looking forward to uh, the upcoming stops. Uh, Berlin is next. Looking forward to Berlin. Yes. Going to be great. Uh, Beach Boy, has he um, beep having too much zero or what? <laughs> well, there's caffeine in the caffeine zero in the Coke zero, isn't there? I would really rather not have caffeine in my cola if at all possible, but. Um, this is a uh, Scandinavian likes caffeine. These Scandinavians love caffeine. As a matter of fact, in our in our breakfast buffet, they have the coffee machine there, or whatever, and coffee dispenser. It's just regular coffee. Jen. Same thing. Jen, yeah, that's right. Jen has to strong arm one of the servers. Could I please have a decaf coffee? No problem. They took care of her. They even checked up on her. Said, "Would you like another yes. decaf?" Yes, I would. So that was pretty good. We were pretty pretty happy about the service. But uh, what can I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a most interesting hotel. Uh, it is a historical building from like the eighteen sixties. Uh, it's really unique. Uh, our breakfast dining room i'm gonna take a picture of it tomorrow i will show you what our breakfast room looks like it used to be in the uh in the early 1900s right up until about the nine well up until 15 20 years ago it was a um a room that performers performed in um eartha kit in the 50s and 60s ella fitzgerald, ella fitzgerald uh yeah, Cap, yeah, Cap Calloway. Um, the Supremes have performed here. Uh, there were orchestra. opera singers, orchestra. Oh, uh, Duke uh, Duke Ellington and his band of renown. Uh, Count Basie. Count Basie and his orchestra were here. That would be one hell of a show. This is in our breakfast room. It's, it's a ceiling 30 feet high. Chandeliers hanging down from. I will take a photo of it, show you tomorrow what i'm talking about this hotel is a historic building uh, i think it opened as a hotel in 1990 or 95. um they made renovations to it and uh it's pretty neat uh gotta say all right um uh charlie says i, I just want an invite to see him at the masters in augusta such a gorgeous course couldn't you imagine lame duck uncle bruce uh you sound better from the cough oh i am much better uh, Jen got it as well, but she's coming out of it as well. Uh, but it, it was it was a rough couple of days. Beach Boy, I do understand the excitement if you're planning a stop here. I do understand if you're excited. I mean, if you're coming to Tel Aviv, Bruce, you got to be stoked up beyond. beyond. Well, I can't wait till next week. We're going to be in Berlin. I can't wait till the eight. Yeah, we we love we love Berlin. We really are. We're looking for it. Zach. Uh, One twenty nine thumbs up, Zach. Thank you. The other thing I'm excited about. Uh, and I'll mention it one more time. Uh, I'll mention it a lot, but today I'll mention it. Uh, October 21, Saturday, October the 21st, Secaucus, New Jersey, the meet and greet for this channel. I think you just like saying Secaucus. You think, you think I like saying Secaucus? It's a great word, Secaucus. Secaucus, I don't know. Um, come and join us for a meet and greet. It looks like 20 to 25 of you now have committed to coming to this uh, event already. Already, this is September. Mind you, it is next month. Uh, thank you. Um, people were telling me in July they were coming for sure. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're pushing 2025 20, of you now. Coming to Secaucus, New Jersey to meet Jen and I. I was, uh, Jen was saying to me, well, look, if you give everybody 10 minutes of your time and you've got 30 people coming, that's 300 minutes. That's five hours. I thought, wow, yeah, that's right. That's you know, that's getting up. We get a hundred people showing up. I got, I got, I'm going to talk to people for a thousand minutes. I don't, I don't think that can happen. It is going to be interesting. We'll see how many more show up. But right now, Secaucus, New Jersey, uh, the 21st of October, Saturday, from about noon till five ish at the hotel. Show up anytime you want, <laughs> for as long as you want. Two minutes. Hey, Bruce, good to see you. Goodbye. Uh, you could do that. Uh, up to you. Uh, hang up for the whole thing. 
just let us know you're coming. Send me an email. Say, Bruce, <laughs> Uncle Bruce, um, I'm coming. I'm bringing my wife. My, my best friend and I are coming. Uh, there are four of us coming. Uh, huh? Um, we're bringing pie. We're bringing pie. Uh, we're coming out with some pie. Uh, you you let me know with yeah, this. Here's the email address right now, brucefromer.hotmail.com. You let me know if you're coming to Secaucus, New Jersey, so that Jen and I can book the right sized room for the event and then that way we know how many how many snacks and beverages we have to have on hand and how many servers are going to be needed to service us and all that stuff so help me help you no charge come on out it's no cost uh, we're, we're we're fronting that bill come on and see us would love to have you come by okay 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 zach thank you for thumbs up one two nine man that is awesome we have 135 thumbs ups in the bin baby this is looking good we're looking at a down now that is ahead by 138 points we got the s p up 14. we've got uh uh nasdaq ahead by 14. um 0.1 percent for nasdaq it's given up the ghost uh, a third of a point for S&P and about 0.4 on the Dow. So the Dow is leading the market. Uh, oil up $1.30 a barrel at 89.82. That seems to be the story there. Thank you all for uh, for popping through here. We have right now our friend at SoFi, 892, 893. The high of the day for SoFi, 907 today. So we've been that high so far. Hopefully, we'll go higher than that. GameStop is at $18.10, uh, up $0.29 cents on 578,000 shares. When will GameStop take a run? And will it happen because Ryan Cohen is buying up stock? Is that possibly happening right now? I, I don't know. 1810. It's the high of the day right here. Charlie, I really looked at coming up to New Jersey to visit, but the flight times are not convenient. I have to be home by Sunday morning to take the kiddos to see Disney on ice. And there, there it is. Not a lurker anymore. Hello, number 134, Uncle Bruce. And hello, Bagel family. Thank you, not a lurker anymore for that. Thumbs up. Uh, lame duck, Auntie Jen, sounds like you need to drink whiskey to clear up that cough like Uncle Bruce drank whiskey. That's what it is. That's what it is. Rum, rum toddies will take care of everything uh uh kent is saying um uh, totally understand weird name for a city uh tough to get used to staying or it's tough to get used to saying Secaucus. when we were in southern carolina playing in a tournament one of the kids we were paired with was from south carolina the kid was committed uh now is there more to this story <laughs> <laughs> did you run out of space to type there's got to be more than that <laughs> uh, i'll wait uh yeah yeah okay uh, i the kid was committed uh uh to go to carolina state okay they are uh they are game cocks the south carolina game of people kept yelling go cox <laughs> so weird the game cox from secaucus i don't i don't think so i don't know what what do you is there a university in the in the new jersey area near secaucus i, I don't know anybody tell me it has got to be i have no idea uh, non worker anymore says meet and greet october 21 bring the pies there you go bring bring in the pies uh not a lurker anymore costco pies oh my goodness gracious <laughs> Bringing the pies to Secaucus, New Jersey. Oh, my Lord. Can you imagine if 20 people brought 20 pies? We all had one piece. <laughs> <coughs> We'd still have two pounds of pie per person. 40 pounds of pies. Jen and I can't take any to Canada, so uh, you guys got to take them home. TJ, hi, Bruce. The GameStop movie comes out tomorrow. Do you think that will affect the stock? I did, I hadn't thought of that. I have no idea. Do you think that's what's affecting it right now at 1804? 
Well, no, I'm not a lurker anymore. I don't know if Alberto and Beach Boy are here. Beach Boy is here. I don't know about Alberto. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, Alberto, are you watching us today? Um, are you able to say hi? He might be in meetings. I don't know. Uh, yes, interesting. Uh, SoFi, 8.92 now, uh, up 13 cents. Uh, GameStop, 18.04, up 23 uh, Apple up 56 cents. So we were green over there. The Dow's up 133, which is 0.39 of a point. S&P's up 16 points at 0.37. Those two markets are up. The, the NASDAQ is improving. It's up 25 now, up 0.19. It's coming back up. Not a lurker says pies, more pies. There you go. There's the secret to that meet and greet in Secaucus, New Jersey, October 21 for all followers of this channel love to have you come on by say hi it'll be great to meet you in person put a face to the name and the name to the face uh touch grass uh, let's make a gamestop movie uh amc is thinking there you go mm, mm, mm. 4.94 now uh sorry 8.94 on sofa 8.94 we're coming back up to nine here it looks like um 1801 hanging around 1801 now on gamestop as we say, uh, the closest large university in New Jersey would be Rutgers, Rutgers University. Now, what are those guys called? What is their handle? Rutgers. I don't know. What are they, Ruts? I don't know. <laughs> they do. You know what they do? You know what they do at Rutgers University? They do stuff over and over and over again. You know why? Because they're stuck in a... A Rutger! Oh no! Oh no! Cut that out! Stop that! You crazy commentators out there! You kids! Uh, One hundred thirty-eight thumbs up, despite making fun of the Rutgers uh, uh, lame duck. Uncle Bruce movie bagel time. There you go. Uh, JJ uh, is saying uh, uh, TJ the GameStop movie comes out tomorrow. Will not affect the stock, but Uncle Bruce channel should see a pop. Okay, about that, wouldn't that be great if they, if if I were in that movie in a positive light? I have no idea. No one, no one talked to me about. It. Uh, maybe they're using me as a as 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 a, you know, fodder. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea what to think of. Gonna be gonna be something. Uh, Bobby Atkinson. I am looking forward to see who plays me. From the Uncle Bruce comments in Dumb Money. I heard it's Al Pacino, says uh, Bobby Atkinson. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Uh, okay. Uh. <laughs> oh, no. Billy Crystal plays me. Billy Crystal plays me. There you go. Billy Crystal. Or or, or Bruce, uh, 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 Michael Keaton. Or Michael, no, Michael Keaton. No. I am Batman. Um uh, just remember, I am Batman. Uh, JJ, clickbait title tomorrow, Uncle Bruce. You got to make a clickbait title tomorrow about that movie and your channel. Get all that linked in. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Well, welcome to uh, welcome to the channel. The movie is based on uh, that. Uh, that Uncle. That movie is based on this channel and everything that happened here. There you go. Uh, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I just, I can't, I just don't know. Hard to say. I got to tell you, uh, this is a record for me. I've been on the air an hour and 48 minutes uh, up until today. I have not been able to last this long. Uh, so I am definitely getting better from my goal because even a few days ago, I couldn't last more than an hour and 20 minutes. I'd be out of gas or gagging away. Uh, BW, I think it's the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I think that's what they're called. The Scarlet Knights. Unless someone else says something else, I'm going to have to believe it. Uh, there you go. Uh, okay. Scarlet Knights. Well, I, you know, is that better than the Gamecocks? I don't know. Uh, go Cox, go. I don't. I don't know what to. Don't know what to think about that. Um, Kent, you got us going on this one. Uh, options, Nomads, so glad you're on the mend, Uncle B. Yes, sir, I am too. We are uh, we are a lot better than we were last week. We were hurting last week. Uh, didn't get to see as much of Copenhagen as I'd like to have, but um, 
hey, uh, it happens. You, you get you get ill no matter where you are. It's the way it is. You got to just power through, and keep going. Jen is coming around big time, which is great. And uh, we had enough strength today to force ourselves to eat lunch at uh, the famous Stockholm, Sweden landmark restaurant. TGI Fridays. Uh, we were able to pull ourselves through that. Yeah. All right. Uh, JJ. Yep. I know. I I know a trader who's a Rutger alum. I know someone who's an alum, and and they're Scarlet Knights. There you go. Okay. Very very good. Lock and roll. Cool bean stuff, man. Cool bean stuff. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see how that goes. All right. <laughs> Lame duck. Struther Martin is Uncle Bruce from Cool Hand Luke. <laughs> I love Struther Martin. I love it when he was in uh, Slap Shop. We're losing <laughs> all those fashion shows. <laughs> there are pro scouts in the stands with contracts for the Chiefs. <laughs> Uh, Rutgers isn't very important, says Farmalus. Uh, they're just there to be the bottom feeders of the Big Ten. <laughs> All the love coming out right there. Um, doesn't sound like a, a graduate of Rutgers to me. I'm just guessing. I'm guessing. I don't know. Oh, my, my. We're losing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. What a great movie, Slapshot. What a great movie that was. Oh, my gosh. What are you, what are you, what are you guys uh, putting on your hands there? Uh, foil, coach. Every game, foil. Old-time hockey, Eddie Shore. <laughs> we have a failure to communicate. That's another one of his famous lines. cock a doo SSBW. <laughs> Oh, what we have here, gentlemen, is a failure to communicate. There you go. Well, we'll see how sensational the GameStop movie is going to be starting tomorrow. Friday. Tomorrow's option expiry Friday. Should be fun. Uh, communicate. That's right, lame duck. <laughs> Oh, my, 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 my. Paul Newman, Struther Martin, and all those other guys in that Slapshot movie. Oh, my God. I bet you after Paul Newman made that movie, he was thinking to himself, what have I done? And then the movie picked up the, an afterlife. And with videos and DVDs, that movie has made nothing but money for the makers of that movie. It cost nothing to make. I'm sure Paul Newman was the most expensive part of that whole show. My gosh. <laughs> I don't know. 893 on SoFi, uh, trying to bounce back into the nines. 894 now. And GameStop is 1804, up 23 cents. There you have it. All right. I'm going to say my goodbyes, and Jen will say her goodbyes. Jen, are you going to say goodbye? Goodbye. Jen saying goodbyes. Um, have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day today. Thursday, Thursday. September the 14th. Make yes. nothing yes. but money, 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 and uh, make more money. Um, get really rich. Uh, dude wants to know, Uncle Bruce, do you ever wear the Uncle Bruce shirt around YouTube, uh, you know, around Europe, pointing to the image and saying, that's me. Yeah, me. No, I don't do it. I, I go around Europe as a, uh, a recluse. Uh, Inga Bergman type, uh, you know, celebrity. I, I try not to get noticed, and it works very well. Uh, the Big E's here. Neat, 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 dude. Neat, 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 neat. Deep value. VIX or uh, are our five-year lows. Touch grass. Uh, thanks, you guys. Um, have yourselves, like I said, a, a great rest of your day today. Um, be well, and and uh, make sure to give the knee emojis a little go here to say hi to the uh, and honor the Knights of Knee uh, as well. And uh, make a bunch of dough today on your condors. So watch them continue to depreciate out. Uh, same with your covered calls and your poor man covered calls. And 
make some opportune trades here and there. Larry Titus, thank you. Neat, 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 says Larry. There we go. Hector, neat, 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 neat. Here they come. The knee emojis are coming through right there as this page goes all knee emoji. All knee emoji crazy. How about that? You got to love it. Lame duck. Neat, 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 neat. Day true duck. Neat, 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 neat. There they go. No stopping these, these knee emojis now. We'll see you here tomorrow morning as we fire up this uh, computer one more time. The last time from Stockholm. Uh, next week, Monday, we're, we're traveling to Berlin, so no show next Monday. Zach, neat, neat. So we'll be on tomorrow, and then we'll be on Tuesday from Berlin. So make sure that you join us and uh, come on down for the party, kids. Uh, love to have you. Looking forward to seeing you. Karen D, neat, 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 neat. Karim, neat, 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 neat. Our thing's in New York, Karim. Hope you're doing okay there, buddy. Neat, 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 neat. Looking forward to seeing you October 21, Karim. I know you're coming. Fabulous, man. Fabulous. Neat, 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 neat. <laughs> hey, I'm yelling knee, knee, knee in Stockholm. The least you can do is yell knee wherever you are. There you go. I'm sure the neighbors of this hotel room are going, what is that guy doing in there? They, they sound pretty kinky, those two. I don't know. I, 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 but, you know, got to say that that Jennifer has to look like wife is pretty odd. Can I kind of understand why the knee emojis would be, emo you know, said if she says so, he'll do it. I, I can imagine it. All right, kids, uh, there it is. We're out of here. 18.10 on GameStop, 8.92 on SoFi. Go, stocks. Go, go, go. Have a great one, everybody. Have a great rest of your day out there. We'll see you tomorrow morning right here from Stockholm, Sweden. Thanks for joining me today. All the best. Take care. Bye for now.